Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and out there in the universe there are quite a lot of really mysterious black holes. There's one specific type that we have never actually been able to definitely see. But there are five candidates and very recently we discovered another one, one of the best candidates so far. Let's talk about this so-called intermediate black hole and welcome to the Math. So technically there are three major types of black holes, well I guess four in a sense. The first one, the more obvious one, and the one most of us are familiar with now, mostly because of this beautiful picture, are the so-called supermassive black holes. There's one of these black holes in most galaxies out there, although not all of them, and this is what, for example, Sagittarius A star, the supermassive black hole in the middle of our own galaxy, looks like in comparison to our own Earth. As you can see, our planet Earth is ridiculously tiny in comparison. Then we have another black hole type that we've discovered many times, the so-called stellar black holes, also known as stellar mass black holes, and this is almost the opposite. You'll notice how these are really, really small, and they're so small as a matter of fact that normally their size is only a few kilometers across. These black holes were discovered mostly because, as they orbit around other stars, they actually end up kind of emitting a lot of various radiation and produce a lot of energy simply because they absorb the material from the nearby star. In this case, this is the most famous example, the so-called Cygnus X1, and here, as it orbits around its partner, it absorbs a lot of mass and thus emits the energy as this mass is absorbed and ends up creating the beautiful accretion disk you see on the screen. So this is the second type. Then we have the mysterious primordial black holes, and these are the black holes that were supposed to exist since the beginning of the universe. They sort of appeared really really quickly because a lot of mass suddenly collapsed into tiny points and existed ever since the beginning of the universe. But we've never seen these, and the few attempts at trying to discover these black holes have been so far relatively negative. For example, the Japanese researchers looked at the Andromeda galaxy for a pretty long time trying to discover these primordial black holes, but they haven't discovered anything except for maybe one. They expected to find thousands. And at the same time, some scientists suggested that Planet 9, for example, could be one of these primordial black holes. But once again, there's really no evidence yet, it's just a hypothesis. And lastly, there's another type of black holes that is even more mysterious than all of the above, the so-called intermediate-sized black holes. These are black holes that are normally expected to be over a thousand masses of the Sun, but very likely under about 10,000 or maybe under about 50,000 masses of the Sun, and these are the only black holes we have never been able to most definitively observe. In terms of size, um, in comparison to planet Earth for example, here this type of a black hole would be maybe size of a typical gas giant, like for example Saturn or Jupiter. However, its mass would be in thousands or even tens of thousands of masses of our own Sun. But because we don't really understand how these black holes are created, or if they even exist technically, we haven't really found any definitive proofs yet. But there were at least five observations in the last few decades where we kind of thought we saw at least five. Now, the more famous example is actually from roughly around 2003. Back in 2003 and for about a decade, scientists were able to observe this really, really bright flash that was also observed in different frequencies, and having analyzed the data and specifically the actual energy output and the amount of different multi-wave uh, energy generated, they realized that something must have been really massive to create this. And the most recent follow-up to all of this observation and analysis that was only released a few weeks ago from when I'm making this video, once again confirmed that it's very likely something akin to an intermediate black hole that was very similar in size and in mass to what you see right here, that very likely had a star that fell into it. And when a star falls into a black hole, it obviously is going to generate a tremendous amount of energy. Okay, in this case it didn't really do anything because this is just a simulation, but the amount of energy generated here suggested that this was a tremendously powerful event, and only something really powerful, but something not as massive as a supermassive black hole could have caused this. But that was the first observation of so-called IMBH, Intermediate Mass Black Hole. 
The other more recent observation or actually analysis involved a runaway star, basically a star moving really, really fast away from our galaxy that very likely gained that velocity by approaching really close to intermediate black hole, or at least something really massive, but not a black hole in the center of the galaxy. One of these stars was moving so fast and was coming from such a strange direction that the only reasonable explanation scientists could give is that there was an intermediate mass black hole, completely invisible, but somewhere on the outskirts of the Milky Way. And now, only a few days ago, scientists released another paper suggesting that there is another intermediate black hole that was discovered very close to the center of our own galaxy. And unlike previous discoveries that usually dealt with either other galaxies or essentially not actually even given us a specific location, this time we do have a very specific location where we think there might be an intermediate black hole that is once again a little bit quiet. It's not visible and it doesn't produce any energy, but there is a way for us to see it. And it involves looking at what's happening around the area where the black hole might be located. The scientists analyzing the ionized gas here realized that it was moving way, way too fast and it seemed as if it was orbiting this really unusual location in the middle. And without a black hole, this is really challenging to explain. It seems like there is gas kind of moving around in a circle in an orbital kind of a motion with speeds of anywhere between 10 to even 60 kilometers per second at really far away distances. The only explanation is that there is something really, really massive in the center of this gas. Something equivalent to about 10,000 masses of the sun, very similar to the simulated black hole you see right here. It's just a little bit smaller in size than Jupiter, but its mass is tremendously large. Now, for all we know, this could be obviously some other really massive object, like for example, maybe this is actually our first detection of the clump of dark matter in the middle of the galaxy. But right now, there's really no evidence for that. A much easier and a much better explanation is that this is, once again, the fifth detection of a potential intermediate black hole right here in the Milky Way galaxy. And this is actually not the first time this team discovered a similar black hole. A few years ago, they've also identified a similar black hole of about 32,000 masses of the Sun using a very similar technique. In other words, it's not their first discovery and it's very likely not their last. It's possible that this team will discover a lot more of these intermediate black holes in our galaxy and at the same time, they might be the first to finally confirm one as well. As of today, it's still a candidate. We still have no actual confirmation that this is a black hole. Nevertheless, it's super exciting and I'm only looking forward to more studies from this team to find out what they actually discover next. But until we find what this is and until we actually discover more of these mysterious and, well, practically invisible to us black holes, that's really it. You can check out some of the other black hole videos that should be popping up somewhere above my head. And once we discover more about this unusual gas cloud and what's causing all of this, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe, possibly share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. And maybe also support this channel on Patreon, it actually does help me quite a lot. Alternatively, you can also support this channel by buying one of the wonderful person t-shirts or posters or possibly even a pillow that's available in the description below. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye-bye.